Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Earth and Environmental Science. This is Module 1 on Earth's Resources and we're going to be looking at video number 1 at the Great Spheres. So our purpose in this video is really just to introduce you to these three important spheres, the geosphere, the atmosphere and the hydrosphere. What we will need to do is to model the processes uh, that we believe may have been important in the formation of each of these spheres. Now that's not an easy thing to do on a video, but what we can do is just kind of introduce this now and then explore this a little bit more during class time. So one of the things that we want to do is to give you a little bit of an idea of what it might look like if you're able to tick off each of these learning intentions that we go through. So after each learning intention, I'll give you three kind of levels to aim at. A must, which is kind of the minimum standard that you should be. Uh, a should, which means that uh, this is something that uh, extends you on a little bit from that basic level and then a may which is kind of the higher level so I'll try and make sure that the verbs and things that I use uh, reflect that uh, deeper knowledge that uh, is reflective of higher levels of understanding uh, one of the things that you can do obviously as you're watching these videos is to aim for the level that you feel most comfortable and then to see if you can push yourself a little bit beyond there uh, because that's how we learn and grow so when we're looking at the three spheres, being able to describe the key components of each sphere is, is one level and a basic level. Obviously, if you don't know what's there, you can't make any comments about how they might have formed. Um, then we want to be able to discuss some of the scientific uh, process present in each of those spheres and link them to ideas about origins. And finally, it's about models. And that's what this is uh, primarily about, is can we develop models that helps explain some of these important processes which have led to the current composition of the geosphere, the atmosphere and the hydrosphere. So the first thing we need to do is to look at each of these spheres. Um, I've added the biosphere here because the biosphere is going to be a very important part of our study of earth and environmental science. Um, the biosphere, or at least the processes that occur in the biosphere, affect each of those other three spheres in one or more ways. Uh, so we want to make sure that we consider the biosphere as also having a very important impact on our planet. But the three spheres that we're interested in are basically the sphere of rock, uh, solid earth, that includes the soil layer um, going right through to the centre of the earth, and obviously we can't see all of that. Uh, we've got to make some models to make inferences about that, uh, but certainly for a lot of the stuff that we can see, we'll be analysing that and seeing if we can identify some of the key components. We want to look at the atmosphere as well, which is the gaseous layer that surrounds the planet. It's the its primary constituents are um, nitrogen and oxygen, but there's another a number of very other important gases that are part of that uh, atmosphere as well. And certainly a lot of things that are cycling through the atmosphere, not to mention um, higher up in the atmosphere, things like ozone, which has a very important role to play and which um, has different consequences on life depending on whether it's high up in the atmosphere or close to surface level. And the third one, of course, is the hydrosphere, we know that a very large portion of our planet is ocean, uh, water. Um, it's one of the reasons it's called a blue planet. And the little picture that I've shown you, kind of, you can see the dominating effect of the um, oceans in here. And uh, that's really what we have. We have a lot of water. Uh, water influences our climate, uh, our weather patterns, uh, and also um, our is present under the surface uh, of the earth, as well as flowing across the surface of the earth. So water is a very important component. And again, we're gonna to need to look at all of these three spheres and how they interact with one another. Let's cut to the chase. And again, all I wanna do is introduce these for now and then go into them in a bit more detail when we get together in class. So the formation of the geosphere is probably um, one of the important things that we need to look at. So we're talking here about the Earth, the sphere of rock that we have from the surface that we walk across right through into the centre of the Earth. Now we know that um, there's some universal theories here. Um, so the formation of the universe, um, commonly accepted amongst scientists that the Big Bang 
um, was the origin of the universe and a lot of the material um, that we now can see. In fact, there's still some material that we're detecting that uh, came from that original uh, Big Bang. But all of the material, all of the matter that uh, came into existence during the Big Bang uh, underwent a number of different processes. And we can now see that there's certain things that are happening as a consequence um, that provide some evidence for the Big Bang theory. Secondly, there's the planetesimal accretion theory, which is basically that, um, uh, and I guess this is really linked into the whole idea. What's important here is gravity. Gravity is really important to uh, the planetesimal accretion theory because it's basically the idea that um, massive objects are going to attract one another on the basis of gravitational attraction, and that can um, either bring them together um, to accrete, to actually build up in size, or it can cause them to become uh, in or, or take on an orbital nature. And so this describes the formation of the solar system. It can explain some of the um, path of moons around some of our larger planets, including our own, um, and is the idea that um, is co most commonly used to explain how the Earth actually got to uh, where it is now and in the in the form that it's in. Now, the planetesimal accretion theory kind of explains how it got there to begin with, but there's been changes that have occurred as a, uh, as a consequence after both the Big Bang and our um, settling of our solar system. And one of the most important of those is plate tectonics. Now, plate tectonics is such an important theory that it gets its own topic, it gets its own module, which is the second one that we'll be doing. Um, but uh, for now, hopefully you'll be aware from your junior uh, or, or middle high school studies that you um, undertook that you know that plate tectonics is the theory that the um, upper part of the Earth, the solid crust and upper part of the mantle, is split into a series of plates that move relative to one another. They can come towards one another, they can move away from one another, or they can slide past one another. And this has created a number of very important landforms that we see around the surface of the Earth. And going hand in hand with that is the rock cycle. Um, worth, I guess, quickly mentioning now, three types of rocks, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. And these things, uh, each of these different rock types can, um, over time, become another rock type, depending on the different processes that are occurring. So we do see this rock cycle, a cycle in that the uh, materials can cycle around through different types of rock. And they can also cycle from the crust into the mantle and back up again. So we've got a lot of different processes that are occurring um, that are affecting the geosphere. In terms of the atmosphere, well, we don't think that the um, Primitive atmosphere is the same as the one today. Certainly one of the um, arguments is around oxygen levels and the fact that um, the first organisms were probably photosynthetic, capable of, or even chemosynthetic, uh, capable of using uh, either light from the sun or energy from different chemicals to be able to uh, create uh, energy that they could then use in a form for their own um, respiration. And often that also went hand in hand with the release of oxygen. And if that happened, then that could certainly have changed the concentration of oxygen in the early atmosphere. And there seems to be some arguments both um, of different types of minerals that we see in the Earth's crust, as well as changes in, in uh, our expectation of what's happened in terms of oxygen levels and also formation of an ozone layer um, to change the composition of the atmosphere over time. The two processes of photosynthesis and respiration then particularly important in cycling materials through the atmosphere, but also in regulating those levels of carbon dioxide and oxygen. And finally, in the hydrosphere, um, the hydrosphere is again a fairly complex uh, one for us to study, particularly because we're talking about freshwater and salt water. We're talking about uh, water that may flow from a, onto a mountain down through rivers uh, and end up in the ocean through the ocean itself where we have a number of different layers that we can see, particularly some areas of the ocean very, very deep and different things happen um, at different layers in the ocean. Uh, particularly the difference in how much light penetrates can be one very important factor uh, in terms of whether or not any 
uh, plants can survive certainly below certain depths. And we do know that uh, light differentially penetrates at different depths. We see the colour of the water, for example, is one key indicator that um, the white light's not going all the way through. Different wavelengths are being filtered out as uh, with depth. So look, this is a, a big intro. Uh, there's lots and lots of information that we need to look at, and we're going to tease this out a little bit as we go along. But most importantly, what we want to do is see if we can model some of the processes that have led to changes uh, in the composition of the geosphere, the hydrosphere, and the atmosphere. And we'll have a look at that during class time. Thanks for watching.